Right, Shalom. First, I'd like to give all praises unto Yahweh Ba Shami Shai and double honors unto the elders and the apostles which were at GMS. And honors to you brothers out there on the highways and the byways doing this work in all sincerity. You know, Shalom to all the true believers out there. Uh, this video is just going to be a, um, a video going into the world wars. Seeing as we are on the precipice of World War Three, okay, we're we're at, we're at the point where World War Three is going to become a hot war between two major powers. You know, we're we're at the point where you have proxy wars occurring, alliances being made, pawns being moved into place. But pretty soon, you know, the big pieces on the puzzle are going to start clashing. They ain't just going to be the pawns. All right, so. First scripture I want to bring out is um, the thing that have been is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun. Okay, so that scripture goes on many levels and we could take it to the level of nations uh, and men. Um, the motivations of men, um, the causes and effects of most um, affairs of men doesn't really change. Technology might increase, but ultimately, the the motivators, the influence of, over men, don't really change. Men, men are still influenced by emotions, the same emotions as they was two thousand years ago. The same lusts, money, power, pride, some honor, love, hate, revenge, all these things and can be used to manipulate a man and they can also be used to manipulate a nation so therefore there are already no new causes for war okay but in this day and age what we've had is world wars which these world wars have fit a certain pattern now we we know ultimately that the, the world wars are basically prophecy from the heavenly father to happen world war one world war two and obviously you got the final one world war three but also we know that the so-called white man the devil the elites lucifer it is it is be given into their hand to orchestrate these things upon the earth and all these these wars world war one world war two world war three they were all planned and orchestrated by the so-called white man their elites by what manipulating the nations man all right, putting them into quagmires where they enter into wars. Okay, some are motivated for different rates. Some were for self-preservation. Some were for more money, more power. Different reasons why different nations entered into the different wars. Okay, now what we're going to take a look at is World War One. Okay, now World War One was prophesied in the scriptures. You had the, the, the angel from the bottomless pit, Apollyon, which represented Kaiser Wilhelm. Okay. Right. Uh, that can be found. I ain't going to go through the whole breakdown, but that can be found in Revelations, the ninth chapter, where it speaks about the locusts, which were the fighter jets. The first time fighter jets were and bombers were used in a war. Okay. That goes into Revelations, the ninth chapter. You had the men with the hair, you know, as women. That's talking about them German soldiers with that long lock of golden hair coming off their helmet you know that's that's talking about that and he said one woe is past and behold there come two woes hereafter what I'm going to just focus in on is the world war one now world war one to the elites the objective of world war one there were many objectives one of the objectives was to bring about communism okay to further impact on the power religion had over the people and bring more power to the state one of one but one of the the, the main the main objective was to form that that baby, the League of Nations, man, which was basically uh, the the scaffolding for the One World Government, which later morphed into the the UN, which they want then the UN after World War Three to morph into their One World Government. Okay, all right, it's like in a cocoon stage. Now, you might say one of the reasons why World War One became a world war. 
okay that's what I'm gonna really get into now is to show you one of the reasons why World War 1 became a world war and why World War 3 is gonna be a world war okay now World War 1 I got this article here called how did alliances help cause World War 1 I'm not focusing in on the economic nature of it I'm just dealing with the alliances because the alliances is a big part of why so many nations were involved in World War I and so many nations were involved in World War II and why so many nations again are going to be drawn into World War III as it is written surely the least of the flock shall draw them out because it's going to be because of alliances why a lot of these nations especially America are going to be drawn into this warfare okay now it reads Answer, mutual assistance packs of all types meant that when any one country was involved in a conflict, numerous other others were automatically called on and involved. So you could have had a beef, which is what World War One was. One World War One was the beef between two countries. That's it, that's all it should have been. No, no one else when Arch Arch Archduke what was his name? Archduke Ferdinand or I don't know why I got the Archduke. Uh, get the name real quick. Uh, assass Wait, maybe I should use the word assassinated. Which that was all set up, you know. That that was all set up because, like I said, if you know what everyone's motivations are. You could do something like that. You could know that killing one man is going to lead to this if you set it up correct. And um, if you want to, you want to idea how the elites work. They're cunning devils, man. They know how to manipulate. They know how to manipulate situations and people. You gotta go back to um this Game of Thrones. Now there's two. There's actually three. There's three characters in that Game of Thrones, which really represent the elites. Sometimes what the elites do, they'll make a program. And you'll put three characters in a program that represent different um, uh, characteristics of themselves. You got the Iron Bank, because we know that the elites are the Iron Bank. They're the bankers, they bank nations, they bank takeovers. Okay? They're even in the thing it says they're more than they're more than um just a bank. They were like a guard man because they were always there nations and so forth would rise and fall but they the iron bank would always be there that's how they put themselves up on that pedestal so you had the iron bank right then you had the lannisters which the lannisters represented them that family the elite elite family okay so like yeah right and then you had little finger now, Littlefinger represents the cunning of the elites, man. Because he's one cunning motherfucker, man. And he knows how to manipulate people. He knows how to manipulate situations and stay in the background. Stay off the radar. Which is what the elites do. They manipulate situations and they stay off the radar. And what's Littlefinger's goal? To become king overall. Right? So, basically, that's what the elites do. So... They they um had this guy Archduke Franz Ferdinand assassinated because they knew it was gonna spark that war between them two nations and then that war due to the mutual um defense pacts was gonna start the World War One and achieve the goals they wanted to and it's all planned all right it ain't happening by mistake it's a domino effect so let's go back get rid of this let's go back it says. Others were automatically called on for and involved. In the early 20th century, the powers of Europe readied themselves for war. Right? Every government knew it would happen, so they forged allegiances. Just like today. Everyone's readying themselves for World War III, but who's pushing it behind the scenes? The elites. Right? And the different things that the elites are making happen, like the economy and, and, and so forth, the dollar, all that. France and Russia had an alliance for many years 
and 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 and, and um, France and Russia being allies, man. That's madness because they had two opposing philosophies, but they still came together. France and Russia had an alliance for many years, but in 1907, Britain joined to create the Triple Entente, or whatever the hell it's called. So that's one power block. Another alliance of powers was signed in 1882 between the Kingdom of Italy, the German Empire, and the Austria-Hungarian Empire. This was called the Triple Alliance of the Central Powers. That's your other block. Now it says, there were many other alliances between nations in Europe that affected who ended up on what side. So you had other alliances. Just like I'm going to show you today in the world, there are many alliances. Some alliances are going to be broken. Some alliances are going to be um, held, held true. The act that started the war was the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir to the throne of the Austria-Hungary on the 28th of June 1914. Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. Okay. Now, it didn't declare a war on France didn't declare war on, on um, Britain, they didn't de declare war on Russia, they declared war on Serbia and moved troops over the border. Russia, being allies of Serbia, declared war on Austria-Hungary. So the war should have really been between Serbia and Austria-Hungary. Now Russia got involved. Germany, being allies of Austria-Hungary, declared war on Russia and France. You see the multiplier effect? Britain and pledged they would help defend Belgium from attack in the Treaty of London. Germany tried to sidestep the French forces and attack through Belgium. This brought the British Empire into the war. It's all dominoes, man. This is all set up. The Ottoman Empire was an old enemy of Russia and made an alliance with the Central Powers. And they know this. Listen, the elites, they got all the, the intelligence agencies on lock. They know who... And they know the mentality of all the leaders. They know men the mentality of the people. They know the history. They know which way people are going to go. They know them. Like Littlefinger. You know a man's motivations. You know a man, you know, you can predict what a guy's going to do. If you know his history, you know his mentality. If you know a nation's history, their mentality, their, their, their financial position, economic position, you can work out, okay, which way are they going to go? What are they going to do? You think they didn't know that the Ottoman Empire was going was gonna to come up against Russia? Because they were old enemies. And then everything else fell into place. Bulgaria was feeling bitter over a precious defeat at the hands of Serbia and joined the Central Powers, Germany and Austria. The Queen of Romania was first cousins with the King of Britain and the Tsar of Russia and persuaded her husband to join the Entente Alliance. All right? Britain had a, an um, alliance with Japan and the Emperor of Japan sent troops to help the British. Italy did not join the Central Powers as they said they would in the Triple Alliance. Instead, they Italy switched sides all the time, you know. Instead, Italy joined the Entente Alliance in 1915 fighting against the Central Powers, which is going to happen again. In World War Three. certain nations are going to start the war on one side and end the war on another, man. It's like Europe. The EU are going are, are going to end up launching missiles on America, man. Okay? So it ain't no new thing. The US did not join the war until 1917 after a German naval attack on the American passenger ship, the Luci Luciana, which that was all fake. That was all fake. That was a false flag. Okay? Because they tried to paint the Germans. The Germans, the, the Germans didn't want a world war. They just ended up in the middle of one. The war was not only in Europe, but also in the colonies in Africa, Asia, and Pacific. Had there been no alliances, no alliances, the war would have been between Austria, Hungary, and Serbia. Alright? So, that's the point. Okay? Now, that's World War I. The same thing basically happened in World War II. Give or take, you had a couple of influences to do. Germany was angry, you know, the, the so-called white man raised up Hitler. And even Hitler wasn't looking for a world empire. Hitler wasn't looking for a world war. Hitler was attacked by certain countries, man. See, a lot of people don't know that, which I'll put a link. Hitler was actually attacked by certain countries, which they say he invaded. Hitler only wanted Poland. But he, <laughs> and then some, in some madness, the guy ended up going into Russia, which that was all set up. The elites told him, look, you got to go into Russia. Britain was never supposed to enter into World War II. They had a deal with Germany. They had a deal with Hitler. Hitler was their agent. But guess what? Britain wanted to destroy Germany because Germany is always a threat even to this day because the Germans are more... Basically, they're better than the British. 
when it comes to everything. So they had they wanted to destroy them and they also wanted to show that the League of Nations didn't have no power because the League of Nations could have shut down Germany if they had acted at any point while Germany was building up their military and invading different countries and so forth. But they never they never stopped them because guess what? They want to show the League of Nations didn't have enough power so that today when World War Three happens, they're gonna say, look, this would all never have happened if the UN was had the proper power, the one world government. But anyway, it was basically the same things. You had different nations allying together and had to jump into that war. And World War Three is going to start the same way. With different false flags, because the, the Hitler burnt the rice stack. That was a false stack. You're going to have different false flags, different men switching sides, and they're going to be brought into this war. Okay? Now... Let's have a look at the, some of these main allies, right? Now you got the Collective Security Treaty Organization, which most people wouldn't have heard of. Six, it's got six members, two observers. Okay, the current members are Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, and Tajik, Tajikistan. All right. That's that's an alliance right there. Okay, so anything pops off with them nations, they all in the barrel, okay? You also got the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Right, which is founded in 2001 and by the leaders of China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. You see where we're going with this. You see the same things that happen for World War 1 to occur. World War II, so forth. These alliances, these pacts are being formed, which is going to drag all these nations into a war from a smaller war. It's going to cause a smaller war to, um, basically, what's the what's the word again? To bubble, to um, expand. All right. Then you got another one here, which is an Arab, the Arab alliances which is called the Peninsular Shield Force, which is Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab States. And then they got certain links themselves with other countries. Obviously, you know, Saudi Arabia and them, they're all with um, America for now. But treachery happens. These nations might end up saying, fuck that, we're going to side with Russia. Just like Iraq is leaning towards Russia right now. Just like Egypt was leaning towards Russia. And you got obviously the big boy, which is NATO, okay, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and we all know what nations are in NATO, and any Na any NATO nation that is attacked, they can basically call in all the NATO nations, man, including America, which is why what's going on down there in the Middle East is so touchy, which is why they're using ISIS to go up into Syria and go and menace the place because. What you're gonna find out is there's a there's a military defense pact between Syria, um, Iran, and Hezbollah, and then Russia has declared that they're gonna defend Syria. It's in their interest to defend Syria and Iran because those countries are key to Russia's defense that they're able to protect themselves so russia they don't need to have no treaty russia are going to protect their bases in the middle east they're not going to allow them to fall so russia's involved so the point that i'm making is right now what's going on over there is they're using all the isis because isis has no packs that's why these these proxy wars are being done because the minute May any major nation officially attacks another major nation, it's World War Three. If Israel attack Iran, Syria, Hezbollah, and Iran are at war with Israel. Russia, China, all their allies are going to join into that war. 
Israel, America is going to join in. America is attacked, that's NATO. And then all the countries that have got different alliances for the different NATO, you see how the whole thing is going to come together. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Just, 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 just like Serbia versus the Aust Austria Hungary. Them two nations officially locked heads, and you had all these different nations jumping in. Terrorist organizations ain't going to cause that. See, when this world war starts, man, it ain't going to start because of ISIS. It's going to start because of official means. Right now, you got Syria and Turkey. They, they look into lockheads. Now, if Syria attack Turkey or Turkey attack Syria, and vice versa, Turkey is NATO. Syria have their defense back. Then you got Russia, China, blah, blah, blah. Okay? It's all the same thing. So whether they attack, whether there's a, an official attack on Syria or official attack on Iran or an official attack on Hezbollah or, or, or which, which is Lebanon or if they're is an official attack on Israel by them or a false flag of an attack of Israel by them, whatever. Just like that, all these nations are going to be drawn into it because of these military alliances, okay? And because of different countries' security being affected by different countries. All right? And other nations are going to jump in because of they, they had a grievance with another. They say, fuck it. Same thing that happened before is going to happen again. And we're at that point. We're at that, the Middle East is at that point where sooner or later, it's going to get official. Sooner or later, one official nation is going to attack another nation officially. And once that happens, all bets are off. All these packs are going to be called in. And that Middle East is going to be on fire. And it's not just the Middle East, but then the war is going to be fought all over the world from Japan straight over to South America from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean there's gonna be war alright so these treaties are a big part of it man um, let's see if there's anything else I could bring out one more scripture man I mean if you go into the different packs there's loads of packs man you, and you go to the list of, of um, military packs on Wikipedia, which I'll, I'll post that. You see that there's so many packs, but then you got unofficial packs too. You know, you got guys that rely on people for certain things economically. They ain't gonna let that, them go down like that. Okay, so it is what it is, man. So let me just get this final scripture, man. So hey, that stuff with ISIS, man, it might look, you know. But there's a reason. That's why ISIS is ISIS is now fighting with Hezbollah now. You see what I'm saying? They're using ISIS to fight those that they can't officially go in and fight yet. But eventually, one of these nations is going to officially rise up against an official nation. And the proxy wars are going to go out the window. And the big boys are going to have to step in and they're going to have to step in and get involved because it's going to be all official. Right now it's all under the table shit. It's going to come to the top of the table, baby. All right. Revelations 11 and 14. The second woe is past and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The third woe will come quickly, man. And all we're waiting for is that moment when Germany declared war on Serbia. That's it. That's 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 all we're waiting for. We're waiting for that moment where Germany declares war on Serbia, and then all hell broke loose. All right. So with that hope, brothers were edified, man. You know, keep your eyes open. You know, this is what popping off out there. That's why you gotta watch these things because it, it the trigger point for this world war down there in the Middle East with all them defense packs. Is, is innumerable and them so called Jews down there they're going to do something stupid man they're going to do something stupid man Shalom